Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. I mentioned in the last channel update that we were en route to having cloud function support for Dart on Google Cloud Run. So in this video, we're gonna get started with that and deploy our very first cloud function. Let's get started. To get started with cloud functions, you need to create a Google Cloud account, which will allow you to use the Cloud Run services. Secondly, you need to install the Google Cloud SDK. So once you come to this page and follow the quick start guide, it will get you started with it. There are installers for different platforms. Lastly, we need to install a Dart package. So what this gives you is a generator for scaffolding different types of cloud function projects. So once we've got that, I'll come to our terminal. I'll go ahead and create a directory and then cd into that directory. We'll go ahead and run the generate command and we want to generate a hello world project and then we can run pubget to update our list of packages. Once we've done, we can open this in VS code. We've got our implementation code within the lib directory. This file consists of a function which returns a shelf response and shelf is the library of choice used to um, compose our web servers. This cloud function is an annotation, which goes ahead and does some code generation behind the scenes. And the generated code is placed in here, our bin server.dart file. So this file is auto-generated. We do not modify this one. We can go ahead and run this example by opening our terminal. And then we do dart bin server.dart. And when we look at that in the browser, we get this hello world response. We can also run this project in a Docker container because we're given a Docker file here as well. So we can go ahead and run Docker build T. We'll call this hello funk and then we'll point to the current directory. And once we've built our image, we can go ahead and run it by entering Docker run. We'll pass in some extra flags and then our image, which is our hello funk. So if I go ahead and launch locals 8080, then we got this here and I'll go ahead and kill this. In order to deploy this as a Google Cloud function, we need to first authenticate ourselves as a user in the terminal. Using the gcloud tool, we'll run gcloud auth login, which will go ahead and then it will open a page in the browser which looks like that. Choose an account to continue to Google Cloud SDK. So I'll choose an account and then I get asked these questions and I'll go ahead and allow, which now logs me in. And then once you're logged in, it tells us here what our current project is. If we've got multiple projects, we can also go ahead and set our default project by running this command. If you want to know where your project ID is, you can also come to the dashboard and then under the project listing, the ID is here, so you can copy that as well. What we now need to do is to deploy, which we can do by running gcloud beta run deploy, and then the name of our function, which I'll call dart cloud fn, and also we'll set the allow unauthenticated flag to disable authentication, and then the source will be our current project. So I'll just put a period. So if I go ahead and run this, then we're asked a question about choosing a target platform. We want the first one fully managed. Then we're asked about the region. We want to push our code to. In my case, I'll just select 10. And then it will go through building our project using the Docker file and deploy the container. While that's running, we can also see that when we come to our dashboard, and we go to cloud run over here, actually not cloud run, cloud build. And under history, we see that our process is running. So when I click on that, you can see the actual steps from our Docker file that is being run currently. So at some point, this process will be complete and then will be deployed. And once the process is completed, we get a green tick. And also in the terminal behind us, we're given a link to our cloud app. So I can command click on that. 
which opens it here. And now we have our first deployed cloud app. We can also access this link when we visit our cloud run section and then it's listed here and we got the URL here which clicking on that will also open the same web page okay so this looks good let's go ahead and build something useful and for our example we're going to build a QR code generator so this will be an endpoint that we can visit with some parameters and then it will go ahead and generate a QR code for us. I'm going to be installing a package that will be used for the QR code generation. I'll open my pubspec.yaml file and under dependencies I'll add the barcode image package which provides a couple of utilities for creating QR codes. I can close that. I'll import that package and I'll also go ahead and import the image library which is already installed when we install barcode image if for some reason that doesn't work then try and add this package manually in the pubspec.yaml file we'll refactor this one to look like this first thing we need to do is to create an image object so we'll instantiate the image class which takes in a width and a height so for now we'll just do 150 by 150 and then we'll fill our image with a background color of white. And then to draw our QR code, we'll invoke the draw barcode function, which takes in our image. And the type of barcode we want is barcode.qr code. And then we'll pass in some data. For now, we'll just say data. And let's close this off. And then let's send that image back as a response, which will be a PNG file. So we'll invoke the encode png function which will take in our image and then we need to set the correct headers of our response so in our headers we'll set the content type of our response which is image slash png we can go ahead and test this out by running our server.dart file which pulls in this function and then if i visit locals 8080 in the browser we get this image back okay so let's expand this a bit we can make the width and the height parameters that are passed in via query strings as well as the data so let's go ahead and do that so in here i'll create a variable called params and to get our query parameters we'll do request dot url dot query parameters and then in our query parameters we can retrieve our width these are given to us as strings we need to convert it into an integer so we'll do int dot try pass and then we'll get the params and the width and if for some reason we don't pass that in then we'll set 150 as the default and let's do the same for our height like so and then to retrieve our data i'll just do params d and let's pass the width and the height in here so let's go ahead and test this out And here's an example that we've got here with the width and the height set to 120 and the data passed in like so. Let's polish up our implementation a bit. Passing the params in like so could potentially throw if um, any of these are null because if we look at the docs for try pass, it says the source must still not be null. So I'll just use a null operator to check if it's null, then we'll pass in an empty string so that this will safely evaluate to null, which will therefore give us 150 as the default. I'll go ahead and add a check for our data variable. So I'll create a variable called data and then that'll be set to params d like so. And then I have a if check for data. So if data is null or data is empty, then we'll return a 405 response, which I believe is bad request. And then in the body of that response, we'll just have a message saying, please set the D param, including W and or H. And W is width and H is height. 
and then the headers for this response will have the content type set to text slash plain. So we can go ahead and test this out. And when I refresh this, everything else should be fine. When I get rid of that and run it, then we get this one. If we have the data param set, then it should still go ahead and generate it for us using the default width and height. Okay, this looks good. Let's go ahead and deploy this example. And before I deploy, let me go ahead and set the platform and region options by running gcloud config set run platform managed. And then for the default region, I'll just set it to US central one and make our deployment. And I'll call this QR hyphen generator will allow unauthenticated and set the source. It runs the build process straight away without asking us questions about the platform we want to use in the region because we've already set those as defaults. You can come back here and then under cloud and under cloud build, we should see our build process running. And once our deployment is successful, we can go ahead and launch this in the browser. Of course, we get this message, which is expected. So let's pass in some data. And then we get that. Let's set a width and a height. And there we go. And we can also confirm this is an actual QR code. If I launch this on my phone, let's change this to hello. And then I focus on this and I tap the button to search. Then we get our hello text. And I'm going to end the tutorial here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on future tutorials like this one. If you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.